Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now at 388. The Nasdaq's up 67. S&Ps are up 32. Our guest today, folks, is Wave, Wayne uh, Virgin. Wayne is the uh, CEO of the Tampa Bay Watch. Tampa Bay Watch is dedicated to fostering a healthy Tampa Bay watershed, which we have and which we want to get better. Uh, uh, it's a community-driven uh, restoration projects, education programs, outreach uh, events, and you know, literally right down the street from us, folks, there's a new pair, and uh, Wayne's put together a new watch discovery um, center, right, to educate folks, yeah. right? Yeah, we opened the new discovery center last July as part of the new pier project. It's a combination of an aquarium and a museum. Okay. Uh, so it's something for the public to come through. We do educational programs for the kids, and then we just launched this brand new eco vessel. So it's a 47-foot catamaran that takes people out. We do trawls on the bay. We do dolphin watch and dolphin identification for NOAA, a part yes. of the scientific recording. Right. And people go out for about 75 minutes. They have a great time, and they learn a lot. That's amazing, man. Yeah. And then, of course, what we have down here, folks, which is really cool, too, we have dolphins. We have turtles, you oh, know? Yeah. And the turtles are beautiful, man. I mean, there's yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah. And, you know, and there's a million things we can talk about. I know, I know there is. <laughs> what I'd like to just get into a, a bit and because this is really important for everyone across the whole country, folks, okay, is cleaning up waterways, okay? We're talking about, in our case down here, we're talking about old crab traps, right? Yes. We're talking about plastics everywhere, right? And I know I've seen a few, like, we have your website up, and the website uh, is tampabaywatch.org, folks. So, you know, the volunteer aspect of cleaning the waters, it seems like it's getting a lot better. Is it? Meaning, what I mean by that is more people get educated, more people realize that, hey, man, this is a, a resource that we need. This is not mm -hmm. something like, you know, when this first started, oh, you're a tree hugger, you're this, you're that. It's like, no, it's seriously, right? <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. it like blows my mind yeah. that, that, you know, that, yeah, that's how it might have started 30 years ago. But all you have to do is realize that if you don't have an ecosystem, you don't have anything. That's right. That's the backbone of life. Water is life. Yes. Right? So we all need it. We need to make sure that it's around for us and for our children. Um, one of the things that's amazing is that people are learning. They're getting more engaged. But as we learned down here this summer with Red Tide. Yes. You know, we, we, Huge problem. Yeah, it is. And, and, and what happened was back in the 70s, 60 Minutes did a story on Tampa Bay, and it was declared a dead bay. There was no life in really? it. Really? Back in 74. They said there's so little life, there was really hardly, hardly anything left there. Wow. And so we've done some incredible turnaround in that over the last 40 years because of organizations like Tampa Bay Watch, being able to go yes. in and do boots on the ground projects, like our oyster reef ball projects as an example. I'll talk about that in a minute. Yes. Where we go out and actually do things that help clean the water, right. or help improve them. Uh, oyster reef balls are something we build. We built out there with volunteers, so it's a community-driven project. Yes. And basically, we install these these 200-pound oyster reef balls, the concrete domes. Okay. And they populate with oysters. Every one collects somewhere between 1,000 and 2,500 oysters on these on these oyster reef balls. And so, the, so these just grab onto them. Is that they, how it happens? The spores are in the water, and they just form in there, and they start, they start to grow a shell. Yeah. And they start populating on top of each other. The significance of that is that one oyster can clean up to 50 gallons of seawater a day. That's so when we do, you know, we're looking at an expansion program, for example. Yes. And when we take a look at that, adding another 500 a year, that's over nine billion gallons of seawater that are cleaned over a year by adding 500 more of these oyster reef balls. That is so cool, man. And it's all organic. It's all natural. Yes. You know, they, they're, they're low maintenance. They protect the shoreline and help with erosion. I mean, it's a win-win-win. And then people have a blast, of course, because they're participating, but then you're educating them because then they can go back, you know, if they're vacation down here, they see what you're doing, they can go back to, you know, their oceans somewhere, anywhere in the country or in the world in general, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And really get engaged. Yeah, and there's opportunities for freshwater improvements as well. If they live inland, there's things they can do because it's all tied to an aquifer or to freshwater that people are drinking. So they can do something similar with uh, plants for freshwater yes. that will have similar effect. They take heavy metals out of the water. And that's the idea is essentially, you know, there are ways that we can improve the quality of life and the quality of the planet 
that are not going to change our lives that significantly. We just need to be smarter about it and not ignore the problem. So how did you get into this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been in the zoo aquarium world for a number of years. Have you? Yeah. And I came down here, and interesting enough, what I found was I'm an avid scuba diver. Okay. Right? And I yep. came down here. That does it. Yeah. And I said, you know, I want to find a place that, that an organization that's going out to clean up the water. Right. And I found all these places that were selling, selling T-shirts. But they never seem to actually do anything where they go out and do the projects. Okay. And that's how I discovered Tampa Bay Watch. Right. That's what they do. They that go out is, and that, that boots is, on the ground. You know what's so cool about that, folks, okay? I think all of us, I love the water, too. I mean, just being around the water, right? And I don't think that anyone that is, likes the water, you realize that how important it is and, in particular, the type of life that the water gets. You know what I mean? Like we were just up uh, Crystal Bay and I'm watching in Kings Bay and they're, they're doing a lot of work up there. You know what I mean? A lot of volunteers, you know, getting that algae off the bottom, which is, which is a huge deal. And then once that grass comes back, folks, and you, you wouldn't believe the amount of animals that come in. And I've seen it within two years, the amount of animals. Uh, it's just amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd hate to be one of those animals because they get eaten so fast. <laughs> they do. I mean, they really do. But, yeah. but you know, it's, it's real. And that's what seagrass does. It acts as a nursery for small, some of the big fish that are game fish that we go out for. Right? Yes. They start out as smaller species, and they're protected by being able to hide in the seagrass. Right. As well as being the food for manatees and sea turtles and other animals. Sure. Which is, which is phenomenal. But we talk a bit about the red tide, and since since you know we'll talk about we'll talk about your arena, we'll talk about finance for a minute, right? Yeah. There's also a significant economic impact to all of this. Yes. You know, last time red tide came through in Pinellas County in this area, I think the estimated loss was about 130 million uh, in tax revenue for about the yep. for, for that it's summer 2018. Business. And right now the the adding tape is still running here, in terms of what the impact is from red tide this year. So. Things like we're doing are things that are natural ways to help recover from that. People say, what can I do? Get involved in a project, help plant some of these things, be a good neighbor, clean up after yourself, don't throw plastics in the water. Right. Those, all those things, they add up. They and do. make a big difference. They add up. And, you know, I, I love that you brought up the idea that the economic benefits, because I remember having a, a, a guy on, I forget who he was, like 20 years ago, right? And he was explaining, and what it was, I think it was like at the, at the highs of 2000, okay? And what he was explaining is that you got to, that he was explaining the quality of life. And that, you, ha you should have a number on that, okay? We have numbers on everything else. And what you're talking about, what is the quality of life worth when you, me, you're bringing the family down to the water? That's worth a fortune, and, you know, this was a financial guy, and it was really cool understanding it. Do you know what I mean? Because I really started looking, and I said, well, that, that's, that's an equation that's very important. Yeah. You know, I mean, the bottom line is that, great, you know, you can have a million bucks, but if you walk down and you have a dead freaking ocean, what do you have? Yeah. You have nothing. All these visitors this summer came down, July 4th, big weekend for the pier. Pandemic still, you know, coming down. People are so excited. And it's loaded with dead fish. Yeah, well, and the city, heavy. yeah, and the city did a great job of staying on top of cleaning it up. Yeah, you know, that took something like I don't know what it was, 750 tons of, of, of dead fish out of the area because of the red tide coming through, and that tied back over to spill from Piney Point. Right, we believe, you know, and the impact from that on, on, on adding fertilizers into the bay. Right. So how many people were impacted by that? How many people in hotels on St. Pete Beach? How many people in Pinellas County? Totally. Right. And then how many people can't breathe? Just stay right here. We got a quick break. We're going to come right back. Dow right now, folks, is up uh, 371. Nasdaq's up 60. S&Ps are up 30. Stay right there. We're coming back with Wayne. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. 
Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Our guest today is uh, Dwayne Virgin. Dwayne is the CEO of Tampa Bay Watch. Now, you can check out Tampa Bay Watch, folks, at tampabaywatch.org. You know, let me ask you, Dwayne, plastics, okay? We know plastics are a huge deal. Talk to me about plastics in the water. So one of the things that we've learned, science has proved, is that, you know, when we throw plastics out, we throw trash out, we assume a lot of things break down, but yes. plastic's not an organic product. It's right. man-made. And what happens is it, it does not dissolve. It just gets broken down into smaller and smaller pieces. Right. So a lot of that ends up in the food and water that's out there, and not realized because it's gotten so small. Recently, they found that um, people people at a fish have found pieces of plastic in, in a fish's stomach. Sure. Now they're finding it embedded in the flesh when they put it under a microscope. And a recent because study. Because the plastic's got so small, broken exactly. up. Yeah. Right. But it's, it's still plastic. Be, yeah, yeah. It's still plastic. So are we eating it? We're eating it. We're eating, we're eating and drinking about a credit card sized piece of plastic per week for every human being on the planet. That, that's how much is out there. Right. And it's plastic, which is a petroleum based product. And so, you know, you wonder why cancer rates are so high. I was just going to say that, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's scary. And so, it, whatever we throw out, whatever we discard, whatever we're not using, right. it doesn't go away. You know, some of it, some of it does. Some things break down naturally, but so much of it doesn't. And so, by being conscious of that, and finding better solutions, and make sure that we're going to be around, that our grandchildren are going to be around. Totally. You know, that's it. This is survival of the race, and you know, multiple it is. generations. No, it is. And I'm sure that many people are saying, "Man, you know, I never thought that plastic could actually get inside of us, but it's very easy. You can you can see it's very easy. There's they, no doubt." They right. said one of the one of the highest concentrations is in salt. Think about think about how small salt is, and that you got microplastics inside. I can salt. see that. Yeah, yeah, I can see that for sure. Folks, the website is TampaBayWatch.org. Get over there. Uh, he has a donation pot in there too. It's getting us some bread, man. The bottom line is that uh, this is a beautiful thing. I appreciate you being here. Appreciate all the work you're doing, and uh, you know, love to have you back.